Hi guys, my name is Ellie, welcome to my channel, uh, and today we're doing a palette focus on the Sephora Pro Editorial. I was about to say cool, not cool. There's a neutral cool one, a neutral warm one, and the editorial, which is what I have in front of me. Uh, it is spring, I'm having a lot of fun. I don't know if you can tell, but I put, you pro I don't think you can tell, I put glitter sunscreen. There, you can see the leftover bits on my hands. Um, I put that on because I'm feeling sparkly, I'm feeling fun. I want to play with this big ridiculous color story. I kind of want to do something with like this this pretty thing, some purples, some blues, maybe like one of those laid over that guy. With I, I, I just want to touch some things and put them on my face. It's the weekend. I want to wear the colors. And if I get my dress up high enough, you can see that it's also purple, and we can have some fun. I don't know what I want to talk about. I had that same problem yesterday. Oh, no I don't. I filmed a very, very ranty video about um, project panning, and it was like an hour long, so I deleted it, because I don't think I want to rant that much. I think it's good sometimes to sit down in front of the camera and just like get all your thoughts out, but I don't think that's what I want the end product to be. So I think, since I talked a little bit about it, that I want to condense it here and reattempt now that I've got most of my word vomit done. I'm putting on eyeshadow primer, by the way, the Smashbox 24 Hour Photo Finish Shadow Primer. It is my favorite. Then I'm going to put on a base shade from this tart Tartlet palette and then a shimmery pigment on my brow bone and then we'll get into the other one. Because as much as I say these are palette focuses, I don't care about them having a, a base shade. And this one has like a white but I think it's a duochrome with something else and I don't care. So let's just jump into it. I wanted to film the other video that was my ended up being too ranty for me to want to post it. I was filming that because Smacy had put up um, a video about why she doesn't project pan or she's not currently trying to project pan anything and why it doesn't work for her. I think that was a really good idea. I feel like project panning has kind of piqued some people's interest and at least watching the videos has gone a little bit trendy and a lot of people are attempting project panning without necessarily having the same background and understanding of it as people who've been in the community longer. So I'm gonna try to talk about some of my tips and tricks for panning successfully. So how to not hate it. That was one of the things that made me kind of sad, like, that's dramatic, but it did. It made me really sad when Smacy was starting it off saying that she'd gotten comments and she agreed that a lot of people were using project panning as a punishment. I don't think it should be. I think that you should have an end goal in mind and that end goal is going to be different for every person. So if you see somebody else who's, you know, panning a palette or who's um, panning a full face or somebody who's on a no buy until they go through A, B, or C. That is an end goal that hopefully that panner has thought out that fits something that they're trying to accomplish. And I think seeing somebody do that and then saying, I want to pan a palette just because you've seen somebody else do it without knowing why you want to pan a palette, let alone that palette you're panning that can really get people in trouble pretty quickly. Well, not in trouble, in hating it pretty quickly. I, I'm panning stuff. I'm on a low buy, um, but what and why I'm panning is gonna be very different from anybody else who might even be panning the same things or might be attempting a low buy. I have a lot of my collection I've already kind of trimmed down. I never really got into, you know, loading up on foundations, um, primers, setting sprays, powders. I never really had 
too many of those. I did go fucking ham on eyeshadows, blushes, highlighters, and lipsticks. And I have too many. So my goal, I think I've, yep, I had makeup on that, so now it's shiny again. It's really hard to get foundation on your nose without hitting your nose ring. Things you don't think about until you have a nose ring. I don't know how anybody does like, or like swatches their lipstick with a lip ring and doesn't get it all over the lip jewelry. I have no idea. They're witches and I appreciate their efforts. First thing I want to do is put Helen P in like the inner half of my crease. I think I'm then going to put electric violet in the outer half and then maybe mimic the same on the lower lash line. Maybe not. We'll find out. You will see the colors as they go up. So teal first. And I'm going to put these down with like a smaller, smaller blending brush and then fluff out the edges with a bigger one without any product on it because I really just want to place it first. But yeah, so I went really crazy on a couple things and that is what I have a lot of. And so that is what I'm trying to focus on not continuing to accumulate. So my combination of panning and low buying is because I don't feel like the things I have are getting the attention they deserve. And that's really weird to say because they're inanimate objects, but this, this palette that I'm using right now, I've used this a total of two times. It's really nice. I really do like the quality. I had this whole thought when they came out that I was going to slowly accumulate all of them and then I just have like go-to's. This would be like my go-to, well actually I thought this one was going to replace my Urban Decay Electric palette, you know, with the assumption that I was going to use it that often enough to need to replace it. That is a joke. And it doesn't have the same colors, so I don't know why I thought that this was going to count as the Urban Decay Electric palette dupe for me you know, with that fear that I was going to run out. Unless you have, like, only one palette and you use it every time until you, you know, it dies, the likelihood you're going to run out of an eyeshadow is super minimal. And I think people who have not focused in or who have accumulated several things and not really downsized again don't really get that same thing going on where they realize that buying a backup of most things is crazy. So I went ham on some things. I have a ton of products and I get sad when I think about them going bad without at least like not even necessarily using them up, but without giving them a good, a good life, a good effort to be used and loved and fully appreciated. Um, panning has also really changed what I view as a good review. I used to be like, oh yeah, they, they used it, they swatched it, they did a, you know, and people would say, oh yeah, I've used this for a week. And I was like, oh yeah, that's a lot. That is not a lot. Anybody who's done like a one month, one palette, or even just tried to like hit pan on something, your opinions of that eyeshadow and of that formula will change so much, even just in the first month. From what you think you like, from what you think your favorite shades are, to what you think your favorite color combinations are, to what they are at the end of that time, are drastically different generally, at least for me. So this is the second time I'm using this palette that I can remember, and I'm using this mint, this minty, turquoisey, gorgeous color. That might not, right now I'm like, oh, it's so cool, it's so unique. I haven't used all the colors in here. I don't know which ones are my favorite. I really don't have a reasonable understanding of what I truly like. I think I'm going to take, yeah, I'm going to take the same two or at least try to take the same two on my lower lash line. We will see how that goes. But yeah, so I have a personal goal of 
using what I have more, starting with the older items, um, things that I can use up every day, stuff like this where I can pull this out, make a base shade of mattes, and then add on some other things. But if I tried to restrict myself to just this palette, just the Tarte Tartlet, I would be miserable, I would hate it, and I would not succeed. I would not realistically make my goals. I'm going to take a smaller brush just for that intersection of the turquoise. And I think that's something that I have learned that I like variety. I don't need as much variety as when I'm buying everything all the time. But I know that I want more than just neutral mattes. I know that I want shimmers in there. I know that I want to switch up the shimmers. Um, but I can now look at a palette like this and say, yeah, that's something that I can incorporate into a lot of different looks. And I don't need every neutral palette that comes out. I don't need, you know, four of them when I have this. And I think understanding that maybe Project Panning isn't for everybody is very important. As well as understanding that everybody's usage is very personal and very different. Um, LS has talked about that as well, where she's talked about people comparing progress and how that can be problematic. And that sounds way more dramatic than it is. But if you're comparing your usage to somebody else, when you don't know their goals, you don't know how much they're actually wearing their makeup off camera. Because um, there are some people who put on a face of makeup, go to work, get home from work, take that off and put a whole new face of makeup. So they're getting two full faces of makeup most days. And if you're only wearing your makeup two or three times a week and doing one face, that you're going to have not nearly as much dips and product going away as the person who's doing it more. And that might not be something you even really think about until you're wondering why everybody else is making so much more progress or why, you know, so-and-so can just hit pan willy-nilly. It's because it's cause usage is very different, and some people use a lot more product even just doing the same looks. I do think... Ooh, ooh I think I want to use... I think I want to use Sean, which is this matte deep teal, to, like, add some depth and deepen up the outer corner with yet another different brush. Similar to the two we've used for my crease so far, though. I think I like it. We're going with it because it's there now. So yeah. Um, different than just saying, I want to pan to pan. What do you want? Do you have too many of similar colors? Do you want to get a better understanding of which formulas you like? Do you um, need to cut down on spending? What is the drive to pan? And if it's just, oh, well, everybody's doing it. Yeah, you can test it out, but it might not have nearly the same impact that it has for so many other people. Oh, I'm really liking the teal with the turquoise. I might have to do that as its own crease a different time. That's really, really pretty. So yeah, knowing what you're trying to get out of it and how you're going to get that out of it. So by panning things and rotating my makeup and going on a low buy, I'm hoping to get rid of some of the things that I don't need. So decluttering stuff as I realize I don't like it, as well as um, using up things that are older or that I have really basically the same palette other places. Like, I don't need a standalone neutral matte palette because I have these types of shades and a bunch of different ones. 
So these, being older, get to go away first. They get to die off first. Because they're older, because they're neutral, because they're something, I know I can pull these out without getting bored because I'm changing up each look with other things. And I'm also going to take that same turquoise on like a flat smudgy brush and try and like line in the edge of my lower lash line so that I can get that color but not go crazy with too far down. The other thing is keeping in mind what you will use. Um, I'm not panning the Urban Decay Electric Palette. I'm not panning this editorial palette because I know this is not the type of makeup I could wear every day. Both with my personal preferences and with my work restrictions. So somebody who has a very progressive work that allows them to do whatever they want. If somebody um, is self-employed, if somebody works in a tattoo shop, something like that, where appearances, whatever the fuck, as long as somebody is clean kind of places, <laughs> you're not going to get the same usage as somebody who's trying to pan a bright palette, but is restricted to only wearing it on the weekends. Oh, these are so pretty. I kind of want... Mm, 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 mm. I think we're going with Dina, this blue. Yeah, at least Dina, if not also Addy, which is this metallic -y purple. But let's start with Dina and see what happens. I think that on the outer corner, outer half, is going to be really pretty. So we're picking up that blue. Now if you've decided that you have a specific goal, that panning will help you accomplish that goal, and you have taken into account um, your makeup usage, so you're aware that you're going to use makeup this often and blah blah blah. When you are deciding to pan and you're picking a project and a a rule either doesn't make sense to you or doesn't feel like it applies to you. Change it. It's your face, it's your products, it's your money either being spent or saved. Change the rules to fit yourself. If you don't like using the same shadows every day, don't pan a palette. If you don't have a problem with if you're, you know, one part of your collection is fine. Like, my foundations are fine. I don't need to pan foundations any more than I currently am. I don't need to make a project to involve them other than potentially getting extra points for myself by just putting them in projects because I know I'm going through my foundations and replacing them. I'm not accumulating too many at a time. So, if you don't wear concealer, don't worry about panning a concealer. Um, if you have exactly as many lipsticks as you want, don't worry about panning one. Um, building the project to match your goal, your collection, and your usage is going to help you a lot with being successful. I'm doing a Project 50 pan as well as um, Team Project Pan, which was started by the lovely ladies Kat and Haley from Beauty News, who also have individual channels uh, just by the makeup and Kitsch Snitch. What I'm doing with those is my Project 50 Pan is a lot of things. It's allowing me to touch some older makeup to figure out what I still like, what I don't like, which ones. A lot of them are old or things that I know I can wear a lot without getting too sick of them or switch them up often enough that they feel like different looks without me having to pull a different palette out every day. What I'm using Team Project Pan for on top of having fun 
is I am also pulling a couple focus items out of that huge pool that I'm just going to keep going through either by the end of the year and or next year. I'm going to keep it going if I don't hit what I want to. And that's fine to have an initial goal of thinking I'm going to do this over a year and then it turns out that you're not going to finish it by the year. You can just keep going. It's your project. You don't have to hit any deadlines if you don't. You can extend stuff, you can change stuff, but by having the team project pan, which is focusing on panning a face, I've pulled some things to the forefront um, to use them up faster because I'm like, these things I can focus on, these can be just like if I don't know what I want to do for my face, just pull out the, the set that I know I'm panning that specific set and go through it. And then as we go through different quarters, I'm rotating that to match things. So like my, you know, winter start of the year look is different than my spring panning look is different than my summer panning look will be different than my fall panning look. Because I know that my preference for colors changes with the season. As evidenced by this, I didn't want to wear this two weeks ago, but I want to wear it now because it's spring and it's nice outside and I'm thinking of flowers and pretty colors. It's, it's fun. So that's part of it for me. If you don't have a problem with most of your makeup, you don't need to pan a full face. You also don't need to continue doing items you don't like. I have significantly more than 50 items in my project pan, my project 50 pan, because I know some of them I'm not going to want to keep. I know some of them I'm going to throw out halfway through. I know some of them I might not finish or I might not care to. Let me see. This champagne is kind of greeny, so I'm going to do that. That is called champagne, but it seems like more of a mint, so I'm going to put that, yeah, it's much more of a mint. Not that I'm mad about the color, just I need to make sure that's what it looked like and it wasn't going to magically shift gold and change the, like, the coolie pretty stuff that has happening. So I'm going to take that on the inner half. And I very well might play with some of the Transformer shades. Who knows? But yeah, so I personalize your goal. Once you've figured out whether or not you even really want to pan for the right reasons or for any reasons at all. And if you don't like an item, you don't have to pan it. If you pulled something out because it's the oldest item and you haven't used it in forever and you used to love it, but you've you've tried it, you've given it a good shot and you fucking hate it, get that shit out of your collection. Do not make yourself miserable. Panning something that you don't like is not helping you and is ruining your enjoyment of makeup. Throw it out. I don't fucking care. The money's already gone. You've already used it. Do not punish yourself by making yourself use up an item that is making you miserable because you fucking hate it. Throw it out. Try something else. And keep moving. It's that simple. If you don't like the item, do not waste your time and your joy suffering through something that you can just chuck out and get something else. If something is kind of like tiring you and whatever, maybe like give it a little bit. But if you've tried this, you've tried, it doesn't work for you. You're not enjoying it. It doesn't look the way you want on you. And using it just makes you not want to put on a face of makeup at all. Throw it the fuck away. Give it to somebody else. Chuck it in the trash. Nobody cares. If somebody gives you attitude about the way that you're using your own items, tell them to go fuck themselves. But do not suffer through something that is ruining your enjoyment of makeup and your own appearance, potentially, just to hit some self-imposed assumption that the world wants you to do the thing. If you have a YouTube channel, if you don't, if you have Instagram, if you don't, and you feel like you're going to get pushback from your um, subscribers, they can go fuck themselves too. That's not the nicest thing, but it's it's not their face. It's not their issue that they have to deal with. 
they will get over it if you want to do something else with your project. And it'll be fine if you chuck it out. There are items I know that I've already decluttered from my 50 pan and we're only in the fourth month because I didn't like them. I wasn't enjoying myself. I didn't have fun with those items, so I gave them to somebody else who I thought would enjoy them. Because that's more important to me than suffering through and finishing it just to say that I finished it. It's totally fine to throw out items that you don't think will benefit you. Even if you're like, I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to allow myself to do this. It's, it's fine to change your rules, to change what you're panning, to modify as you go what you're actually trying to get done. I think I'm going to take this guy. You can't see. This, this guy. Not the pink, the one below. Um, so that is Juliet, no, Julie T. Julie T. That would have been smarter. The green duochrome transforming shade. That's what we're going to highlight the inner corner with. And I'm going to do that with this little guy. And that's basically going to be all I want to do on the face. I think that's it. Other than dicking around with the blend and the crease, which I need to tell myself sometimes to just stop. <sighs> So hopefully, in my ramblings, you've learned some tips and tricks. You don't have to pan just because it's kind of popular. Because uh, the people who've been panning have been panning for a long time, and it really doesn't work for everybody. It's fine to not have it work for you. So, Smacy was talking about how she tried it, she didn't really like it, don't do it. That's fine. You do not need to continue it if you're not enjoying yourself. You don't need to continue a project if you're not enjoying yourself. You don't need to continue a product if you're not enjoying yourself. If you realize that you've made a mistake along the way, that you've picked um, products that don't match your goal, or you didn't realize you had a goal in mind and it's changed, stop it. You do not need to continue that. You can definitely walk away at any point, change your rules, change your products, change your panning, or just leave panning altogether. There are plenty of products that I have failed at. There are ones that I've changed. There are ones that um, I have realized partway through the project that I didn't want to finish it, and I didn't. And I didn't even always put a finale on those because I didn't want to. It's my face, it's my collections, it's my money that is either being spent or not spent. So I get to set the rules and I get to make it something that it will help me be productive in meeting my goals. But if your goals don't line up with panning, you don't have to. And trying something for the first time, you do not need to know ahead of time exactly what you're going to do. The first time, you're going to make some decisions that are not going to work out. You're going to pull some items that are not going to work out. You're going to realize how long it takes you to do stuff, and you're going to potentially feel discouraged. That's fine. It takes a long time to use up products. It takes a long time to use up um, blushes, bronzers, highlights. Uh, I, I'm really bad at lipsticks because I just don't remember to wear them most of the time. If I bring it to work with me or if I like take it out of the house with me, sometimes I'll remember. Sometimes I'll literally just my lipstick will be eaten off or worn off and I'll just forget to put it back on for the rest of the day. So I got one application out. But if somebody is much more aware and better at remembering to reapply, to update, they're going to go through lipsticks way faster than I am. And that's fine. So find out which part of your life panning might fit into. For some people it's makeup, for some people it's household things like cleaning products or shower items or candles or whatever. It, you don't have to do both. Just like, I don't really dick around with panning body care because I don't have a lot of duplicates. I don't have an overwhelming amount of body care. So I'm focusing on makeup, which takes longer than some other things. Like if I was panning body lotions, there'd be one gone like a, every week. It'd be so fast because when I am moisturizing, I'm moisturizing all of my big skin every day. 
and it takes a lot of product and it goes through them quickly. But trying to pan something that goes just right out there, like panning the dark shades of an eyeshadow palette, that takes so long. And the formulas, oh my gosh, the formulas are different. Panning, um, panning Tarte versus panning Eyes of Beverly Hills or Lorac, very, very different. These are going to last me forever because they're very densely packed. Um, this is three months in and I've hit pan and kind of expanded that out on this shade. In a Lorac shadow, that would have been done in a month because of the size, because of how firmly it's packed, because of how much of it you use. Uh, things I use just on the inner half of my lid are going to go much more slowly than things that I'm setting my uh, brow bone with, that I'm blending all around my eye with, or things like... Um, that's, that's one of the reasons bronzers are bigger than other things, is because you use a bigger space for it, but then those like huge, like, deluxe mega bronzers and stuff like that, those things will take you all fucking year. They will. Blush, blush takes so long. So long. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And that's even assuming that everybody's using their blush in the same way. People who just kind of like pop it on like the apples of their cheeks is going to be very different than people who do like the, the like 80s C formation. Or like if you can use your blush as a blush and as, you know, like maybe somehow you figured out how to like mix it into a lip product or you're using it to blend out your crease everybody's using theirs differently which means they're going to use it up at different rates and yeah do not try to compare what you're trying to do with it to other people because you will be disappointed and then you'll be discouraged and you will stop it and you'll leave with a bad opinion of panning that could have been avoided that maybe panning something that really does work for you just you got off on the wrong foot so, it's personal, and it should be treated as personal. That sounds very serious. <laughs> Don't feel like you have to match external expectations of usage and what you're doing with it, because that's not realistic, and that's not um, a good... Oh, I don't want to say it, but it's... <sighs> steps for success. Mm. Sorry, it's very corporate speak of, you know, like, setting yourself up for success and... They use a lot of things and taglines like that that I'm so sick of because, you know, but really setting yourself up for success means having a lot more thought go into things and being realistic about your usage and goals and how that's not going to look like everybody else's. Not everybody else's looks the same either. I've gotten into a downer mood. I need to go finish up my face and I'll be back. And this is already slightly shorter than yesterday's. I really like how this turned out. I didn't have a ton of a plan when I opened up the palette the first time other than I wanted to use it. And I really like it. I did a thing with my highlighter. It's it's a lot. Use like a little pinky one down here and more of a purple up here so I can like tie my blush into the purple of my eye. I had a lot of fun. Ooh, maybe you can... No, I don't. Oh, a little bit on my neck. Because I have it on my neck, too. You can kind of see the glitter sunscreen that I put on that I had a lot of fun with. Yeah. So hopefully this was helpful for you to A, see this palette in action, uh, and B, to get an idea of if you're interested in panning and you want it to be a successful, enjoyable thing for you, uh, some things to keep in mind while starting one, and that you can do what you want with it. I think that's a big thing that people don't really realize is that it's totally personalized, totally customizable within what works for you, and you don't have to meet other people's rules. Just make your own. So, if you're interested in panning, I really hope you get a good start at it and you try it in a way that makes you happy. Yeah. I'm gonna go now. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.